Okay, welcome everyone. Thanks for coming by. It's great to have you come by and uh, we're going to have some fun. We're going to do some uh, dogwood uh, blooms today. We're going to paint some beautiful flowers. I'll explain everything from how to draw, sketch this scene, these flowers, how to lay them out so that they look perfect within your size of your paper. And then again, go over all the details of doing our painting, the darks, the lights, the shadowing, how to get that beautiful look of light in your paintings. We cover that all here. This will be the beginning. This way you can see this painting. You can use this as your, you can work from this. So I'll set that up just like that. You can use this, you can take a picture of this, you can uh, hit pause and then you can draw from this. And uh, we'll start up with our drawing right after this. Okay, so we're going to get uh, started on the drawing here with our um, uh, office pencil and uh, we're going to be drawing our dogwood blooms. We're going to keep this real simple. This is a beautiful flower um, painting where we can keep it real simple and yet it's going to be, uh, you know, really exciting. And um, the main thing here is the pencil drawing is just going to be like a guide for our paint as we paint. So. We don't have to get too concerned about the extreme details of our pencil drawing. We just have to get down the main idea of the dogwood blooms. And we're going to do a slight little bit of uh, the vase um, at the bottom of the picture. So let's get started. I'll just kind of make the vase a little bit uh, off center. So just to give it a little bit of interest. So if the center of the page is here. I'll start the vase here and go to the right. And we'll put the vase there. And then we can also, um, I will maybe make a few other marks on here just to, so the vase is about here and it the flowers are about here, and there's some air space over here, some negative space over here, and the flowers are up here, the dogwood blooms. And then over here, the dogwood blooms are filling in this section over here on the and the top and the right hand side. So there's a little bit of negative space over here of just paper. And we can fill that in with a little bit of wash if we want, some beautiful watercolor wash. All right, so we'll get started. And again, these hash marks are just a, a quick guide for you when you're going to draw and do your pencil drawing, just to give you a little bit of a, a starting point so that you're when you're going into draw, you kind of have a game plan uh, as to where everything is going to sit and lay out on your paper. Because I know in the past myself, when I first started watercolor, sometimes if I didn't put these hash marks on, I would start my drawing and I would wind up like making the subject too small or the subject too large and I wouldn't actually get all of the information in the picture frame or the uh, rectangle or the painting as I wanted to. So that's why I really find that this is really helpful. I hope you use this uh, technique. Does it make sense to use this uh, technique of using some hash marks? I think, I think it really will help you um, in your paintings and especially if you have a very complex painting. Um, Doing the hash marks is for a complex painting and drawing it is really even more important. But for this, we still want to use that technique of just getting some hash marks on. Okay, so we'll start out and we're gonna we're gonna make the vase here. And 
And then we have one of the dogwood uh, and here I'm just going to draw the rough shape of the center of the uh, petals of the flower the blooms and uh, trying to keep this loose Here we have another. Okay, so you can see I kind of got my start here. And we'll continue on. We have... Um, the center of the flower here and then it's sort of a the petal goes there and then there's another petal that's here and what's fun about this is it's kind of very free and um, just adjusting my uh, my mat I have a mat around the uh, picture of the uh, dogwood blooms across from me and then there's some uh, stems here and branches and then I'm going to come down and look over here and we'll, we'll finish this so I just try to look slowly and Now with this you can you can just key in on maybe one or two uh, blooms. Um, I'm doing a few more, so I'm doing like maybe five or six or seven blooms here. These uh, dogwood blooms, but you can actually uh, you can do less. And that's that's about good. I I see a few more over here.
and a few branches over here and the same over here maybe a few here's the vase maybe there's a branch here a branch there and that's really about it it's a basic simple um, drawing a few dogwood uh, blossoms out on the paper and the fun part will be the painting actually so we just wanted to get a basic idea of the petal shapes and some of the stems and the branches other than that we're pretty good we have the vase here too so we, we have that shape at the bottom here and that looks good okay so we're going to take a break we did our um, drawing our contour drawing where we just simply got this onto the paper you can simplify it even more, make just one or two blossoms if you want, or you can, you know, do five or six, you know, half a dozen as I did here. And um, we'll start to do the painting and you'll see that it all comes together uh, when we start to paint and that's when we'll really have our fun and uh, we'll come right back. We'll just take a quick break, relax for five or ten minutes and then we'll come back and uh, get our brush and our paint and we'll get started. Okay, so we're actually back and we're gonna um, start our painting. Just wanted to mention, we are using Arch's satin finish paper. So that is uh, basically the pink Arch's satin paper. It's the pink paper, the pink cover. I use blocks most times. They're very convenient. You can just paint right on your block. And then when you're completed with your painting, you can just peel off the page. I also use a lot of um, Arches orange cover, the orange cover, that's the rough paper, and it's the 300 gram. And this is just phenomenal paper. If you can, uh, if you can afford Arches paper or Fabriano paper for your finished paintings, um, I'm not saying, I, I don't always use this paper myself, I actually save this for my YouTube videos. Uh, I always use the best paper I can afford for my YouTube videos and also too if I'm painting for like a gallery show or a competition or something I always would use the best paper I possibly can but if I practice when I do practice and I do a lot of practice painting where I'm just painting for fun painting to practice learning new things you know I would use like a Fabriano student paper they have student uh, paper for uh, for it's pretty inexpensive it comes in pads large heavy th you know, like two, 200 sheets or 100 sheets. Um, but these are the papers I use. So here we have the pink cover for the block, watercolor block, and that's the satin. So we'll start out, we're gonna use a, um, let's use a Raphael brush, a number eight. Uh, Kalinsky Sable round brush, natural hairs. And with this, I just do a couple splashes on there. Let's get started with some dark greens, some greens and some dark greens. French ultramarine blue. Um, that is olive green. We'll use a little a viridian green, viridian. A little bit of uh, yellow ochre. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll put some darks in here first uh, to start with. So this way we'll get started on a good note where we're going to do a little some darks. And maybe we'll do some lighter greens, sap green with a little bit of cadmium lemon yellow. There. And if we can just block in a little bit of green here and there, center of the uh, 
petals of the flowers. Okay, so I'm working in some of these darks around the painting. And you will notice that your flower paintings will come out a lot better if you're doing this style by painting the darks first and sort of carving around and painting around, negative shape painting around the petals of your flowers. And then as we get into the more finer details of the flowers, we can get our needlepoint brush and we can start getting in and doing those real fine details as we go. So we're going to keep uh, and I'm just painting around so there might be a couple Here I'm going to become, here's where you take your artist liberty. When you're working on a painting and you think something's going to look good, even though it might not be exactly what you're seeing in the picture that you're working from or the photograph or if you're even painting a real bouquet of flowers that you might have set up, I'm thinking that this looks really good if I just take some artist liberty and just do some interesting brush strokes radiating out away from the flowers, the uh, dogwood blossoms. So I'm taking that liberty Of doing some bold brush strokes you can do that and then when we're completed we'll say to ourselves did that look good maybe next time we might say yeah I want to do that again I want to do that often I want to take liberty liberties with my brush strokes with my painting with my design of my painting beyond what I'm seeing and that can be a really good thing and then sometimes it might be better just to stick with what's in front of us but that's something that every you know you as an artist you'll have to find out how that works as you go and you experiment with your paintings with your creativity mixing up a little more darker green french ultramarine blue olive green and added a little bit of a burnt umber there Have fun with this. Do this no a number of times. The best way to uh, have fun and, and learn about a certain type of painting, let's say a flower painting like this, is you know painted a number of times, maybe two or three different times. Each time it should get a little easier. Okay, so I've got a good amount of a good amount of darks in there to uh, sort of satisfy that feeling that you need to have some darks in the painting. You can't. 
do without the darks, the shadows, the darker colors, intense colors, the dark intense colors of the greens. Then we're going to do some gold for our vase. It's a shadow side here and then it gets a little bit uh, lighter over here. Okay, now we're going to start putting in a little bit of shadowing on our petals. And I notice here's a little... The shadowing here looks... And then over here, some more shadowing there. And I just keep rinsing my brush with fresh clean water and then drying it a little bit on my apron, which I wear. So I just tap it on my apron quick once I rinse the brush off. You could use some tissue, paper towel. You could leave a sponge by your palette or by your water container. and. Uh, check some water off. Probably one of the main things with watercolor is controlling how much water is on your your brush. That really helps a lot to um, really key in on that and sort of uh, monitor that all the time because that really can uh, I'll add a little bit of detail to this here. And the same here. We'll do a little, a little bit of details here. We're going to come up. We're going to take a break. Again, it's always good to take lots of breaks as you work. Soften the edges. Okay, we're going to keep working, but let's take a break first. Um, relax for about five, ten minutes. We'll come back. We'll continue working on this. We'll keep. We'll work on the petals a lot more now because we're sort of we have a lot of the good darks um, around our petals, so we can keep continuing to work on this, and then we'll, we'll we'll take you know we'll take breaks as we go. But this is pretty good for now. Let's take a break. We'll come back and we'll keep going.
okay. We just, we're, we're, we're coming back here. I have to turn off the air conditioner here. We're coming back. Let me uh, close the door. Okay, so we're, we're starting back up again. Um, I, always, I thought of this painting as something really nice uh, for like, um, you know, a living room uh, with a beautiful mat and a large frame. So this can be done in a large format. You can see here we're using maybe like an 8x10 format. But you could take this same idea and just go larger. Like, I mean, really nice. Do like a 20 by 30. And then with a large mat, you can make this like a, like a 24 by 36 um, painting, you know, with the frame included a nice uh, gold frame so these these type of paintings are great because everyone loves like the flower paintings you know it looks great in a living room it's kind of just that warm feeling of uh, some nice flowers and so forth and we have some beautiful uh, dogwood uh, blossoms here some dogwood blooms and uh, let's get back started on the painting I'm gonna get some fresh water Uh, fresh clean water is really important with these type of uh, paintings where we're using like the white flowers, the white petals, and we're trying to do shadowing in the petals. So that's real important that we have fresh clean water. And again, you can tell that I uh, use a small uh, tissue to dry off my brush as I go. Um, just a quick uh, informational, um, I have a great video out just recently on uh, how to use a round watercolor brush. And uh, if you subscribe, if you hit the subscribe button below, if you consider subscribing, you're going to get all these great videos and as well as the interesting informationals where I go over details about watercolor, palettes, colors, brushes, interesting things like that. Uh, and you can even go back into my archives in YouTube. You'll see that I've done many uh, paintings and um, many uh, tutorials on brushes, palettes, paints, all different styles of uh, paintings and so forth. So, um, yeah, I appreciate it if you do uh, subscribe and if you hit the notification bell, you'll always be alerted on each time a new video comes out. And I'm always making new videos at least once a week. We have a brand new video on the weekends and then sometimes we create videos during the, the, the week as well. All right, so we're going to get back into it here. We're still um, working on our petals. We have some of our darks we started with, so we made sure we got some darks, you know, starting out our painting, some really good greens and blues and browns and golds kind of mixing everything up warm and cool everywhere warm and cool everywhere let's always remember that that's a good philosophy to and tech uh, technique and and um that's just a good formula to always use of mixing your warm and cool colors all the time together so i use you know blues greens golds that's just a beautiful combination french ultramarine blue green sap green that, that's sap green actually I don't usually I have olive green in my palette but right now I just have the sap green French ultramarine blue yellow ochre that right there is a great a great color to uh, mix up all right so now we're gonna get a dark in here <clears throat> Again, so a few more darks. And then you'll see I'll kind of start doing a little bit of the petals here. Try to get those petals, petals to the metals. And if you start to uh, look at your painting and you're wondering what to do next. It's always the same game plan. Darks first, get some darks going first, and then that's your your kind of your safety valve. You have your darks in first, then you can do what we'll do our shadowing. 
So our shadowing is the that mixture of the gold, blue, and green. Um, you can I'll use sometimes a little more gold, so you can kind of change the change the color of your washes. We're doing our light washes on our petals now. You can change those washes, make it a little more green at times, make it a little more gold at times. You just mix up your blue, green, and gold, and then you just kind of go into the section you want to use as your predominant uh, color as you're doing your petals and doing your shadowing. And I just get some of those shadows in there. So you can see I'm just doing my shadowing of the petals. This looks a little bit warmer, a little more gold, that uh, yellow ochre. That's perhaps the light. The cooler areas are more the bluish green. With this type of painting, the light is bouncing around everywhere, and there's probably multiple light sources, so I'm not going to get too worried about exact shadowing. I'm just going to look at the petals in the photograph that I'm working from, and the main thing is you're going to you're going to work from this painting. Don't don't you know? I know many people like to say I'd like to see the photograph, but it's always better. I mention this a lot more frequently now on my videos. You'll notice. Try to always paint from finished watercolor paintings, so that's why I put my finished painting up first uh, on my uh, the beginning of this video. Um, it's always a better game plan to paint from a watercolor painting because you're actually trying to emulate and trying to copy, in a sense, what you're seeing. So it's better to try to copy the actual watercolor painting because then you are using the same colors. You're kind of your your eyesight and your brain is kind of more familiar with the watercolors, the colors of your watercolor paints, the washes. So that's better to work from, that's why I would say it's better to work from a watercolor painting. Just a, a really helpful tip, I think. I did that mostly 90%, well, you know, at least 75% uh, of the time when I was learning watercolor in the beginning in the first five or 10 years of watercolor painting, I definitely painted from watercolor, finished watercolor paintings from other artists, things I found online, pictures of watercolor paintings and all types of books. So I think that really will be a help. And let's keep going. And again, I'm going to start to speed up my process here. It's more bluish gray in the centers. And you can see my brush strokes. I'm trying to kind of flow out the petals, like from the center of the blossom, from that bloom. These are the dogwood blooms going out from the center of the dogwood blooms. Brush strokes out from there. That looks really good. It almost, it's just, uh, you know, basically it's copying the actual flow of the, the petal of the, the blooms.
and again I dry off my brush a little bit as I go. And again, <clears throat> I mix up my uh, yellow ochre, French ultramarine blue, sap green. See now, when I do these type of things where I just start really, you know, sort of really flicking the paint on there, and that's because that is really will help flowers grow, right? Blossoms grow outwards like this. So if I just do that quickly, like that, that or it actually that that quick movement of the brush and the paint will actually really help to. Uh, to have the feel of the uh, the petals growing outwards and the, and the feel of that uh, subject matter we're painting. So if we can keep that, kind of that flow of things. Same if we were doing like a hill, we would keep our brush strokes the way the hill is. If we're gonna go downhill with a brush stroke and we're painting a hill going downwards, we're gonna take our brush and go downwards like the hill is flowing down. Same thing with petals of flowers. If you're throwing the paint and putting the paint on, if you're flowing outwards like this, radiating out, that's the same way the petals grow out. So that really helps to kind of have that feel of the uh, the petals of the, the the blooms here that we're doing, the dogwood blooms. All right, so we're, we've got pretty quite a bit of work done on this here. Let's keep going. And I'm just going to keep doing that same feel. And same deal, gold. Dry my rinse my brush off, dry my brush, go back in, get some more yellow ochre. Rinse off my brush, dry my brush. French ultramarine blue, rinse my brush off, dry the brush off on some of the tissue or my apron, whatever I happen to be using. And then some green, sap green. Okay, there we have our th three main colors we're using here. And then if you need a little darker dark, you just kind of Mix up a little bit to the side here. Burnt umber, French ultramarine, green, and just a little more mystery. Uh, there's maybe a leaf in here or something like a mystery leaf. A little more green, make that believable. That there's more green in there. Good. Okay, so I think we have, at this point, we have a lot of really nice uh, shadowing on the petals of the blooms, the dogwood blooms. Um, we have some really good darks that we said we wanted to... Um, have as we started and we can we can always add a little bit to that there can be some mystery in your painting some mysterious colors and 
darks and lights and things. You don't have to, as long as you have two or three really good looking blossoms here, blooms. So if you have a couple good looking dogwood blooms in this bouquet, in the top, you know, we have a nice little uh, vase here. And if you just have maybe two or three halfway decent looking flowers, blooms, let's say, right, our dogwood blooms, the rest you can kind of make more mysterious and no one's going to even notice it because the way the uh, person that's looking at our artwork might look at it, they might say, oh, and their eyes going to focus in on the few detailed uh, blooms we did, the dogwood blooms. And then the rest is just going to be fun, free, loose, some twigs, some leaves, some darks, some lights. It'll all, it'll all work out perfectly <clears throat> as long as we have a few good focal points within this uh, flower arrangement here. So let's keep working on that idea. But first, let's take a break. Another break. We've been working now for 10, 15 minutes. Let's uh, take a quick break, and we'll come right back, and we'll start to kind of finalize everything. Okay, welcome again. We're going to get back started here. And uh, it's always great. You take a break or two every once in a while, every 10, 15 minutes. Take a break from your painting, step back, look at it, check things out. Let the paint dry a little bit. That always is very helpful when you're working with paintings, especially something where you're doing some flower paintings and you're trying to do some delicate shadowing on the petals of the flowers. It's good to let them set. Uh, the washes and let them uh, dry a little bit as you're working really is helpful to um, have those uh, lighter washes dry and set on your paper. I am using Arches satin paper. It's a beautiful paper to work with and I think especially for flowers. It, it really just, flowers look so beautiful when you paint them on satin paper um, because they're, it's a, a delicate paper so when you're working with sat satin paper you're actually um, you're trying to get pretty much things done, you know, with a, a few brush strokes on your, um, on your flowers and on your your leaves and things like that. Your uh, your greens, basically, it's it really lends itself to someone that likes to paint direct, a la prima. So I, I think satin paper is also can be a great paper for, uh, you know, for doing a. Uh, a lot of washes and glazings. So satin paper works great for both the a la prima approach or the glazing approach. But I guess what I'm saying here is um, it really looks beautiful with flowers. It just has that uh, really soft look to it. Okay, so now I'm looking at this. I came back. I took a break, 10 minutes or so. And I say to myself, wow, it's already looking really good. I don't think we have to do a whole lot more to this. And you might look at it and go, ooh, it's, it doesn't look like it's nearly finished. But trust me, what we're going to do now is just get a few more darks and a few more details in, and you'll notice that it really will look very much finished. So what I'm thinking is we have to definitely get some of the um, center of the petals, um, the details of those here and there. That'll be something we have to do. Uh, a couple of these branches that uh, come out from this uh, uh, dogwood bloom, a bouquet. So if we do a couple of these branches here, over here as well, with some darks. And if we also get maybe some of these uh, petal areas with our uh, needlepoint brush, if we get those, some of those details, that'll really be enough. And we want to leave some white paper. Always remember, white paper is your friend. White paper and watercolor is your friend. Always remember that. Uh, I know some watercolor artists, they just love to paint over all the white paper. And I always say, you know, always think about the white paper as being really a, a beautiful part of your painting. Uh, especially if you're going to mat this with white, like a white, a beautiful white mat. Maybe at the end of the painting, we'll put some white matting around this. And you'll see that the white mat will actually tie in beautifully with the white of the paper that we're going to leave here and there on this painting. And obviously, there's going to be some white uh, petals of these uh, dogwood blooms that are going to be left. We're not painting every single petal completely with wash. We're leaving some white paper on these petals. So let's think of those things now as we finish up. And I think we really are, you'll see that we don't have to do a lot more to this. 
It'll be a little underfinished, but let's let's leave our paintings a little bit under underfinished, I think. And then we can always, a couple days later, come back and maybe add a few things, but let's not over uh, work this. All right, so we said let's do some details on the So we're going to do some details on the And again, I'm going really and a little bit of the gold. A little bit of cadmium uh, yellow. And then we'll do um, some darks, which is a French ultramarine, burnt umber, a little bit of uh, burnt sienna. And we'll just get a little bit of the uh, details of that. That looks pretty good. Then we'll take some more of that dark and let's start to uh, do a few spots here and there where we're going to put in some Less is more. Let's do some branches here. Just a couple branches here and there, and that really will uh, help this to look fantastic. So I just, uh, sometimes if you just take the brush and, and get, a, get a grip on the brush higher up like this and then kind of just flick the brush, you get those really nice, very natural looking uh, branches. Okay, I think I'm going to try a little more green, French ultramarine blue, green, gold.
And then again, adding some darks here and there is going to help us to uh, complete the painting. And uh, maybe we'll a couple splashes to um, fill in some areas that uh, again with with um, some of the effects that we use, like let's say splashing or some branches or some leaves, we just want to try to do a little of each of those and not get too much, like we don't want to do a zillion branches or we don't want to do a zillion dark green leaves. We just want to do a few here and there. So if you do a little bit of each of the different techniques that you have here and there, it's gonna, it'll look fine. So we use some dark, green leaves here and there around. We used some splashing around here and there. We did some uh, branches here and there. Again, the dark green leaves shadowing here and there. Some of the details of the center of the flowers here and there. We can do a little, a little bit of warmer. Maybe that gold, more the gold color around some of the petals here, just to uh, make those sort of uh, stand out a little bit, paint around the petals and they appear. And I might do a little more yellow ochre, just a little more here. Then I'll add very extremely light wash, but a little darker than than this wash here. So you can see this petal is pretty light, but has some tone on there, some tonal value on there. So this petal here, I add a little dark to that, and I carve around and paint a negative shape around that petal. And that, that kind of makes that really look good. It, makes that stand out a little bit and then the same here so this way we kind of carve around a few of the petals to make them stand out same with this one here Okay, I think that looks really good. Um, this is the point where I say let's uh, 
Let's call this finished. We could always go back and do a few little extra things, but let's always kind of stop a little bit short because we're always going to think, oh, I can do a little more to make it look better. And then, and then we find that we kind of went too much overboard and it looks too cluttered. And so this might even be, this looks just the right amount of finished look to it that I would say I like myself, but everyone has their own taste. You know, maybe you might, you might like more details or you might even like less than this. You might like more of a minimal, you know, like a minimal look to it where you might even want to go less detail than this. And that's fine too. You're the artist. You have to figure out what your look is that you like. Okay. So, but I think that looks good. Again, this can be done in a large format, as well as this smaller 8x10, approximately. And uh, let's uh, see if we can zoom in a little. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. Again, I might go in and you know, I could see uh, maybe this area here. A few darks here. That looks good. Okay, I'm glad we had fun again. Please, uh, you know, consider subscribing. Again, we do these paintings here once a week at my channel. We'll have lots of fun. Next time we'll come back, we'll do something a little different. But we're always uh, coming back and doing the same paintings over and over again. We just change a little bit every week. We might do a seascape one week, flowers the next. Then maybe a week later or two, we'll come back and we'll do some more flowers. So um, always know that we're going to be doing the same type of material over and over again here at this channel. And uh, you'll have a great time doing it. We'll have fun. We'll learn new things each time. And we'll see you on the next video.